Hey everyone, it's been a while, and by a while, I mean three whole years. But finally, I am back, the same fat man, just with slightly more wisdom and probably worse posture. First off, I seriously want to thank each and every one of you who stuck around, dropped a comment, or messaged me asking, when's the next episode, or are you alive? Yes, I'm alive. I've been in a bit of a time skip arc, but I'm finally back ready to pick up where we left off in the Scanlation 101 series. When we paused, we were at Episode 5, Typesetting. And today, it's time for the beast of all Scanlation tasks, Redrawing SFX. You know, those massive, stylish Japanese kanji that are slapped across the art like they own the page. They look cool, but they're a nightmare to redraw. But don't worry, by the end of this episode, you'll know how to tackle them with confidence. So if you're ready to finally conquer the last boss of cleaning, grab your tablet, fire up Photoshop, and let's dive in. This is Episode 6, Redrawing SFX. This video will be divided into two part series. Each part will cover two examples. I will go over each example real slow. If you have a bit of experience, you can always watch this video in 2x speed. I will also be adding a bonus trick to speed up your workflow. So make sure to watch the complete video. For the first example, I'll be using this panel. Select the lasso tool and make a selection around the SFX. Make sure to select the layer first, then right click and choose Fill. In the contents, change it to Content Aware, then hit OK. Looks good to me. I have already covered cleaning and redrawing in my previous video. Make sure to watch them first. Let's clean the other areas too. If you are not satisfied with the results, you can always repeat the same process. And please always save your file. Make it a habit to save your file every time you make a change. This will save your life, trust me. Now it's time to add those beautiful SFX. Select the text tool from the toolbar and click over the artboard and type your SFX. In my case, it's blush. When you're done, hit the check button at the top to confirm your changes. Let's adjust the size by scaling it up. For the font, I'm using Bada Boom BB. Let's change the font color to something different for the time being so that we can see it clearly. Let's make a copy of our text layer. This is just for the safe side if anything goes south. Now let's rasterize our text layer by right-clicking over the layer and selecting Rasterize Type. By rasterizing, it makes the process a lot easier to split the text. Let's select the Polygonal Lasso tool this time and make a selection around the shesh. Now select the text layer and hit Ctrl plus X to cut it, and Ctrl plus Shift plus V to paste it in a new layer. Let's adjust the text further. When done, select both the text layers and hit Ctrl plus G to group them together. This way we only have to add the FX to the group and not in each individual layers double-click on the group to access the Effects panel. From there, select both Color Overlay and Stroke. For the Color Overlay, I will change the Fill Color to White. Let's click on this Reset to Default button to change it back to its default values. The Stroke Color is already black, which is the default color. But we have some issues here. I want the Stroke to expand outwards, not inwards. To change this, change the position value to outside. Adjust the stroke size, and when done, hit OK. Now we need to mask out the area that are over the text bubbles. In order to do so, first, I'll make another group and place the SFX group inside it. This step is very important. Now I'll add a mask to this new group. We will use the brush tool to erase the extra parts that we don't need. Before that, let's lower the opacity of the layer. 
so that we can see beneath it. Now let's select the brush tool from the toolbar. Note that I'm using the default hard round brush that comes with Photoshop. Make sure your brush's opacity and fill is set to 100%. Select the mask, adjust your brush size and draw over the areas to erase. Again, while using a mask, black color always erases and white color brings back erased areas. You can always switch foreground and background color by hitting the X key on your keyboard. And we are done with the first panel. Let's crank up the opacity back to 100%. Here's the before and Here's the after. Now for this part, we will go through the same process. I'll fast forward a bit so you don't have to see me repeating the same process. All right, now that we are done with writing the SFX, let's learn how to transform it. Let's activate the transformation tool by clicking Control plus T. If we look at the top, we have some new options. If you click on this button, it will add a grid transformation over the layer, in our case, it's this SFX. If you click on this dropdown, it will show you different warp transformations you can apply over the layer. Just go through this option and see it for yourself. In my case, I'll select Arc. You will see this square box at the top of the layer. You can change the arc intensity by moving this button up or down. When you're done, Confirm your changes by clicking on this button. I'll make some more adjustments to match it with the original SFX. Let's learn how to create this pattern texture for our own SFX. Let's select the layer first. Then using the rectangular marquee selection tool, I will make a selection over the pattern. After that, go to edit, and from there, select define pattern. Give a name and hit OK. Double-click over it to open the Layer Style panel. Check both Stroke and Pattern Overlay option. In case, if something is missing from the list, go over to this plus icon. There, you can add all these options. Now, for the pattern, click on this drop-down and select the pattern that we saved earlier. And also change the stroke width as needed. I'll now quickly clean these SFX. And with that, we are done. Let's redraw our SFX for this one as well. We will follow the same process as earlier. Now here's the thing, I wanna change the text orientation. We can easily do that by clicking on this button. Let's also decrease the spacing between the layers. Let's make some warp transformation on this SFX. Click on the button, and this time we will use these points and handles to transform it. Take your time and make your fine adjustments. For the fill, we are going to make another texture. Again, it's the same process as we did before. Now it's time to clean the original SFX. Note that I'm using my mouse for this, but I'll switch to my pen tablet once I feel the need.
And with that, we are done. For the second example, I'll be using this panel. Let's begin by adding our SFX text. For the font, I'm using Anafont Italic. Next, we'll adjust the size by scaling it up or down to fit the artwork. To tweak the spacing between letters, you can use the tracking option. But in this case, the spacing still feels a bit off. To fix that, we'll use a more precise method, kerning. Double-click the text to enter editing mode. Then place your cursor between the two letters you want to adjust. Now, use the kerning option to fine-tune the space between just those two letters. Remember, tracking adjusts spacing between all letters. Kerning adjusts spacing between individual letter pairs. This time, we won't rasterize the text layer. We will make it a smart object. You can do that by right-clicking over the layer and select Convert to Smart Object. This will allow us to add custom warp transformations without rasterizing the layer. You can't add a custom warp transformation over a text layer. You either need to rasterize it or make it a smart object first. The original SFX have this white stroke around it. Let's add that to our SFX too. Now to get those blurs around the SFX, we will use Path Blur. But before that, we need to convert this layer again into a smart object. This is important if we want the exact same effect. Now to add the blur, go the filters, and then inside blur gallery, select path blur. A new UI will open. Here we can create the blur. Click over the SFX to add our first point and the second point somewhere over here. Click over this point or press escape key to break the path. This blue line represents the direction of the blur. We can adjust the blur amount on each individual points. We can do that by either clicking over the point, this will show this small circular slider and we can adjust it by sliding it. Or we can change it from this panel on the right. When you're done, click on the OK button to exit out of it. Our SFX looks almost similar to the original. Nice, let's adjust the SFX to match with the original one. I'm also going to clean the original SFX that's visible behind our SFX. I'll repeat the same steps for this SFX too. And we are done. This concludes the part one of our two-part SFX series. If you have any questions, feel free to add it to the comments. Trust me, I read each and all comments. Now it's time for the bonus trick. You can save your SFX styles inside Photoshop so that you can use it in the future. Let me show you how to do that. Head over to the Windows menu. From there, open the Can Styles panel. Here you can make folders to organize your SFXS. 
Now to save an FX or style, we have two multiple ways. First, you can drag the effects directly from the layer and drop it in the panel. Or, you can click this plus button to directly add the effects to the style panel. Just make sure your layer is selected. Nice. Let's see how to apply it to a new text layer. I will add a new text layer first. Make sure the text layer is selected. After that, just click the style. This will add it to our text layer. You can also export this effects to share it with your friends. To export your styles, click on this hamburger menu, then select Export Selected Styles. Rename it and save it in your computer. Now to import styles, again click on the hamburger menu and then select Import Styles. And there you go. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friend and click on the subscribe button. I will be back with more awesome tutorials. Till then, bye-bye.